So as a bit of an update, uh, you can see we've got the undercoat and the first uh, coat of the finished green. This is the same green as the side doors on the barn. Uh, it's the one that Anna chose and it's really very French and, and quite pretty. So I, I didn't film it because putting paint on huge areas like this isn't that interesting. Uh, but that's done. I've got uh, it's dried overnight, so I've got uh, time now to put another coat on. The sun is shining; it's a beautiful day. Um, then after that, I'm going to quickly tackle making this uh, strap here, this fourth hinge strap. So it's the same as the other. So we've got that sym uh, symmetry back, and then I've got to continue with uh, chasing out this mortar. And I'm really hopeful I can get a start on that because it's a job I'm not looking forward to. So the sooner I start it, the quicker I can get it done. So second coat done. Job I want to do now, uh, just while that uh, paint is drying, is to replicate that arm I mentioned earlier, just for that side. So I'm just gonna measure that up and then we'll go and have a look, um, see what material we've got for it. One thing my father did was never throw away any wood. And in fact, when you, uh, when you see wood being cut out of old houses or um, put in the skip, you normally, none of this is that actually, but uh, um, you normally find that that wood is obviously seasoned, but uh, generally the trees were grown much slower and the, uh, the, um, the, the grain is much closer and the better quality. So I still live by that standard, although it's more difficult here, but I do save all my offcuts. If they're tiny offcuts, they go into the wood bin uh, for the burning. But this is what my uh, this is my bits and pieces, and I haven't got anything here which I can't really, unless I cut it lengthwise on the th thickness wise on the table saw is going to be any good. But I've got this here, look, which is scabby old. Um, this is a, a part of an old um, wardrobe. Actually, I need two inches. I need two inches wide. So that's wide. It needs to be about 33 inches long. So, well, there we go. Look, that's 34 inches almost. So what I can do is obviously there's a split right down the middle. So if I run that down the table saw, I can create a new straight edge, cut that waist out, cut a length all the way down there. Um, and then I'll have a straight edge to cut that side. And that should do us a bit of old scabby wood. Um, that should be all right. see on that edge there's a chamfer and actually close up you can see they've just taken the sharp edge off of the sides so all we need to do is now just duplicate that on that we take the sharp edges off and we'll give it the uh, give the end a chamfer just take old rusty nail out right let's put the lengthwise chamfer on this side it means we can hide that knot to the back
So there we go. I've just put some um, PVA at the top there just to seal the gap between uh, the wooden door and this so water can't get behind. Um, so that's fine. Now it kind of matches the other side. So Mr. Symmetry is going to be okay now. I'm going to be all right with that. So there we go guys, a full day's work, but not a full day's filming I'm afraid, because it's not very interesting when you get to this sort of big jobs, but not very detailed. It's, you know, putting paint up is just not something you want to watch, is it? But anyway, <clears throat> got its uh, second coat on and I've filled some of the knot holes that's in the, uh, the planks, the boards. Uh, so for the third and final coat, hopefully um, that, should, that should deal with those. Um, there's a few patches here and there and the fake the fake hinge has been fitted so I think I think our viewers were right it did look a bit unbalanced without it so I hope that uh, I hope that looks better very happy with it um, so the next job is the uh, not today is the unenviable unenviable job of taking out this render so the render is going to come out we're going to do our we're going to do our forms for our threshold, our concrete forms for our threshold, and we're going to pour some concrete for the step, and we're going to start to do the filling of the holes and the rendering. Storm, how are you? How are you? We gave him a bath the other day, didn't we, Storm? Try and help you with your knotted fur. I think you're a lot better. What do you think? Well, I'll take no answer for I'm very happy with that. And never one to want to have the fuss go somewhere else. Here comes brambles. Hey, brambles, don't go climbing any trees now, will you? <laughs> but you see, we're going to do our we're going to do our screw heads as well. Get them. You remember we countersunk all of those, so they're below the surface. It means we can fill quite easily. So we're just. We'll fill all those. It rather looks like the doors have got uh, adolescent problems, uh, but we'll let that dry, rub it down, and then final coat, which probably won't film, um, but we're done on the doors. It's just another way of putting off having to do this but I've got my wellies on so there's no excuse so you're hammering out all that lot and I'm, make, I'm making cement yeah and as soon as you're ready I'll put it in okay that's probably the best thing isn't it yeah it's like August isn't it beautiful isn't it the weather's changed <sighs> I haven't made cement for ages have I but you are the queen of cement you are
reckon. There was something here before, look. Looks like that's dressed in some way, doesn't it? Window, maybe. Could be, couldn't it? Or it could just be a fluke. Mm -hmm. I got the float. Right. Psyching himself up for cementing. It's not my favourite thing, is it? It's no one's favourite thing, is it? Nope. Not my favourite thing at all. Strange as it seems, rather than going in with a, a trowel and a float and gently pushing it in, it seems the best technique we found is to literally take small amounts and throw it in. So um, remembering this is just uh, this is just between the stone, and then we're going to over put the uh, render over the top to smooth it all out. So that seems to be working best for us, isn't it, honey? Throwing it. <laughs> this is the gun, the mortar gun. So Miss Anna had to go unfortunately halfway through, um, she had to go out this afternoon, so I've had to finish off and I'm no near as good, she is the, the queen of cement mixing, she gets the, the, uh, the, the consistency just right. Anyway that's the mortaring done, um, we're just going to let that dry and the next stage will be, I've got some more to do here but I've run out of sand, um, we, we, we can then put the render over the top and it'll look lovely and smooth. So ignore the fact that it's all over the place at the moment, because that will be smoothed off the same as same as that up there. That's the hope anyway. But I'm no mason. I'm the first to admit that. Don't enjoy it either. So it's in for a bath now and a bit of a wash, I think. Okay, I'm in my home from home. The, uh, the Brico, where I've just ordered some sand and cement. So the way that it works out here is out the back here you have like the builder's yard and uh, you go and speak to the chap and you tell him what you want and then you bring your vehicle around and he loads the vehicle up straight away that's the plan and it's all been quite straightforward so far so i've ordered some i've ordered some uh, blosh um, cement which is a it's a, a lime mortar which we use to keep the building breathing uh, and three and a half hundred kilos of sand or Sable Riviere which is like a whiter sand but I've never ever seen it white it no looks like normal builder sand to me um, so we go and pay for this then they give us another ticket at reception and then we drive with that ticket around to see the same man again and then we give him the ticket and he gives us he gives us the goods it's all very paper driven and it keeps at least a couple of people in a job so that's not a bad thing so off we go to pay so 95 euros for for the cement the lime mortar cement is for the threshold step and lime mortar and the sand here's me car ready to go and chappy's already got his um forklift going so we're all good so i've just got to give him my my sack now here we are now, fortunately, the chap this morning said that he won't tip it into my bag for me, which is here. So what they've done in the past is they've always tipped it into my bag. He said he can't do that because he has to pick up the measured amount in the scoop. So I've suggested he pour that from the scoop into the bag and then pick the bag up on the forks, which is what they're meant to do, and then drop the bag in. But he's not playing. He's, he doesn't want to do it. So a compromise, I've said, well, I'll try and open the bag and you can tip it into the trailer into the bag. So the good news is he was able to tip perfectly. So we've got that in there and we've got, this is for the render uh, and the mortar. This is a lime mix, Chaux Blanche, 
and then we've got some um, standard blue cement for the threshold the door threshold of the barn not throwing cement at the walls now are you you're doing the threshold just repairing this threshold honey Okay guys, a slow, slow project this one, but um, threshold's done, last coat of paint is on the doors, um, first coat of render is in as we've already said, so it's this horrible side next, won't be today, uh, get that uh, sorted out, get the final render on and then paint and the gable wall is done. And the barn doors, I've got to say, look absolutely wonderful. <laughs>